The injury suffered to the left arm of this deadlifter here was the same thing that happened to Eddie Hall on this punch while sparring, and in this video, we're gonna break down what exactly happened. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. Eddie Hall recently put out a video detailing his unfortunate biceps injury, and in this video, we're gonna break it down and teach you a little bit more about what happened. Let's dive right into his video. You all know what to do if you enjoy these videos and wanna help support this channel. Eddie was sparring here and delivered this punch with his left that caused the injury that was ultimately a rupture of his biceps tendon. Now it happens so fast that you almost miss it. Just watch that left hook, boom, right there, was when that rupture occurred. This is unusual because number one, ruptures of the biceps typically occur higher up in the shoulder. And number two, this is such an unusual position that you wouldn't think would cause that much force on his biceps tendon. But as Eddie goes to deliver this left hook, what I want you to realize is that he's basically making contact with the outside of his sparring partner's body, coming kind of across this way as opposed to punching straight out. Because of that position, when that left comes up right about here, in that location, he's putting an eccentric load on his biceps. As he's coming in, his biceps is a little bit clenched, and then as he makes contact, it's gonna wanna stretch and straighten out that elbow, which is gonna induce this eccentric load on the biceps. Remember, an eccentric load is when the muscle tries to contract while it's lengthening, and this is typically the position that we see muscles and tendons fail in. If I go back to that deadlift video, this, of course, is one of the more common ways that we see that biceps tendon rupture. Remember, in this position, the elbows are being straightened out. They're being pulled. That biceps is being lengthened. So this is an eccentric load that you can see right there, snap, that biceps fails under. So if you envision the similarities of a deadlifter with that arm straight trying to hold that weight, it's similar somewhat to what happens with Eddie Hall when he loops around with that left, causing it to make contact and force his elbow into extension. It still is very unusual though that this was able to deliver enough force on just this punch to cause that tendon to rupture, which has to make us think that there could have been some chronic degeneration in that tendon because yeah, just that little punch coming in is still an unusually low amount of force to cause that tendon to rupture. Now for all these athletes that I talk about, obviously their health and nutrition is a big part of their day-to-day -day life. And if you're striving to make some improvements to your nutrition, then you'll wanna hear about the sponsor of today's video. When I look at my diet and what I'm doing for my health, there's often this pretty big fruits and vegetables size gap that I find in terms of what I'm eating. The sponsor of today's video, Athletic Greens, helps me to fill in all those little holes that I find in my diet. Athletic Greens is a dietary supplement powder that serves as your daily dose of nutrition insurance. It packs in 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients in a convenient once a day powdered serving. I like to start my day off with it. I feel like it gives me a little bit more boost of energy without some of that jitteriness you sometimes get with caffeine or sugar. And I just feel better knowing that first thing in the morning, I'm doing something good and healthy for my body. I start with a little bit of ice cold water and mix in one scoop of their powder, which is great because it really helps a lot with bioavailability compared to taking a pill. I had a drop of their vitamin D supplement, give it a shake and I'm all set. And to be honest, it's hard to believe that something that's this healthy for you can actually taste so good. They're really transparent about their ingredients and what is actually in here. And if you're an athlete, you can rest assured about the safety and quality because it's NSF certified for sport. To get the Athletic Greens immunity bundle that comes with a one year supply of vitamin D plus five free individual travel packs with your first purchase, head to athleticgreens.com slash BrianMD or click the link in the description below. It's a delicious and efficient way to patch up some of those holes in your nutritional deficiencies. So head to the link in the description below to try it out today. Thank you again to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video and let's get back to our learning. Let's take a look at our biodigital anatomy tool to understand the anatomy of the biceps. I've got the biceps highlighted here on the left arm. And of course the bi in biceps means two. And so there are two heads to the biceps muscle. Triceps, tri meaning three, three heads of the triceps. The long head of the biceps is this one here, kind of more on the outside. And its tendon wraps up around the top of the humerus and actually inserts onto the shoulder blade, or more specifically, the glenoid. But then the short head of the biceps originates over on the coracoid process, which is this front bump that we have up on the kind of anterior portion of our scapula. So short head of the biceps tendon right here, long head of the biceps tendon right there. These are considered the origins of the biceps. And if we come down to the elbow, we'll find their insertion. So here's where those bicep tendons insert, and it's onto a bone of the forearm called the radius. The radius is the bone that sits on the thumb side of your forearm, and the ulna is the one that sits on the pinky side. On this model, it looks like it's just one common tendon that inserts here, but there are actually two different footprints for the short head and the long head. Now, of course, we understand the function of the biceps. Number one is going to be to flex or bend the elbow upwards, because if you think of this as like a pulley or a rope, 
when you contract this muscle, you're gonna swing the forearm upwards into flexion. But the other really crucial role of the biceps is with something we call pronation and supination. If you bend your elbow to 90 degrees and turn your palm down, that's pronation. And if you turn it up, that's supination. Whenever you're doing that, what's happening is that radius is actually spinning up in the elbow to allow your forearm to rotate. The primary muscle when your elbow is bent that causes that supination is the biceps. So try it. Put your palm down, hold on to your biceps muscle, turn your palm up, and sure enough, you'll feel your biceps contract. That's that supination of the biceps. Now, I said Eddie's injury was unusual because also the location. Distal biceps tendon ruptures, meaning the area where the tendon inserts down on the elbow, are only about 10% of all the biceps tendon ruptures we see. It's much more common to have a rupture of this long head of the biceps tendon up near the shoulder. So now if we go back to the injury, remember that bicep sitting on top, going down to insert below the elbow, and as Eddie's arm comes around here right there, that's gonna get eccentrically loaded, causing that distal biceps tendon to rupture. Now if we play through kind of the rest of this clip here, of course you can see a little bit of that kind of bulge in Eddie's arm where we see that tendon kind of retracted. So of course these muscles are under tension and if you cut, think of it like a rubber band, you cut that bottom part, it's gonna to wanna to snap upwards and coil upwards. You can see that a little bit here with this bulge in Eddie's arm where that biceps has already started to retract and sort of snap upward. The next thing Eddie gets though is a diagnostic ultrasound. So similar to when you look at a baby when someone's pregnant, we do diagnostic ultrasound of muscles and tendons. So here what they're measuring is they're trying to overlay the probe where that biceps tendon should be inserting and looking to see what injury is there on the screen. On the screen here, this direction is down towards his fingers and this direction is up towards his shoulders. So the biceps tendon should theoretically be coming down in kind of this direction. But of course, what they're measuring here is the distance that it's retracted or pulled upwards into the arm. This white layer we're seeing down here is likely the radius, so where that tendon should be inserting. The next part of the video looks like it's the doctor evaluating Eddie in clinic, and one of the things he's gonna do here is that pronation supination. And what he's basically explaining to Eddie is that's part of what the biceps does, is supinate the elbow up. And so as he's doing this, He's trying to feel, is there any muscle that's contracting up in Eddie's arm? Is he feeling that tendon? And then of course he compares it to the other side to show an example of kind of a normal tendon structure. And there you can see the muscle contract. The next thing he's doing here is literally something called the hook test. And it's one of the best tests to look for a distal biceps tendon rupture. And literally what you do is you have the person kind of hold their arm out like this. You take your two fingers and you try to hook in and you should be able to latch on and grab that big strong tendon. That's your distal biceps tendon. If you can't feel it, then that tells you that there's been a full rupture of that biceps tendon. So doesn't sound like any big fancy name, but actually a very, very useful test. Of course, the title of Eddie's original video is that he had surgery awake. And what allows that to be done is what they're doing here in the video, something called regional anesthesia. We can think of anesthesia as general, meaning they put you to sleep, they give you some sort of inhaled anesthetic that causes anesthesia generally throughout the body, or they can do regional, where we specifically just target a region of the body to provide anesthetic. And if you can do it, it's great because you don't have the risks of putting the patient to sleep. And so here what they're doing is they're using ultrasound to perform a regional nerve block to provide anesthesia to Eddie's arm for the surgery. Here what they're doing is they're looking on the ultrasound screen at the different blood vessels, they're looking at the nerves, and then they're guiding a little needle down to deliver local anesthetic around those nerves. If we go to the screen here, you can see the needle kind of coming across this way, and what they're likely targeting down here is the brachial plexus, so the group of nerves that supply sensation and motor control to the arm. Now we use ultrasound on these because as you can see, there's some pumpy things over here, some blood vessels that we have to worry about. And so you want to avoid hitting those. Hence why we tried to use ultrasound to guide the needle. If we go back to our anatomy model here, this is the area where they're performing the nerve block. Here of course is the clavicle or the collarbone and the big group of nerves that we see behind the clavicle is called the brachial plexus. It's all this big bundle of nerves that come down from the neck and travel on into the arm to provide that motor and sensory control to the arm. There's different types of blocks they can do up here, one called an interscaling block where they literally go between the two scaling muscles, which is right where that bundle of nerves lives. You can do one called a supraclavicular where you block just above the clavicle or below the clavicle. You can do axillary nerve blocks. So there's a lot of different block strategies 
depending on the specific location of the surgery that you're going to perform. It sounds really dramatic to say that you had surgery while you were awake, but thanks to advances in medicine, we're able to do this and avoid the side effects and potential harm from generalized anesthesia. The last thing here to address is, of course, why do these occur? And certainly, anabolic steroid use is something that we see as a risk factor for these, but that's also because of the population that generally tear their distal biceps tendon. I'm not saying that that had anything to do with any specific injury, but that's one of the things we think about when we see these in clinic. You can also have just general wear and tear of that tendon that weakens it over time as you subject it to more and more load. I suspect there was something like that going on here with Eddie because of, again, how minimal of a load it took to actually cause that rupture. Smoking is another big risk factor that we think about for these, but typically they're going to occur in young, male bodybuilders that are subjecting their tendons to really high loads. Thankfully for Eddie, it sounds like the procedure went well, but unfortunately he is gonna have to postpone his upcoming boxing match as his surgery heals. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.